Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon, an entertainer here at IT Pro TV, coming at you with another episode on our How to Use Zoom serial. In this episode, we're going to take a look at using Zoom on the iPad and specifically how to whiteboard in a meeting while using the iPad. Really cool stuff. Join me here if you will. We're going to take a look at my screen. I've got the iPad set up. Now, one of the interesting things about using Zoom on a tablet is we get to touch the screen and interact. You could probably do that on a laptop if you have a touch screen as well. I'm going to be using a tablet stylus for the majority of the stuff I do here, but I've got the iPad hooked up to a keyboard because you're gonna see that I can enter text on the whiteboard as well. So you're gonna see a couple of different ways that I can actually input when we get started. We're gonna jump in and use our new meeting icon, the big orange square on the upper left-hand corner. I'm gonna click on it with the, top, the stylus, and we're gonna see a pop-up that lets me start a meeting. Now, I've already turned on the video, so I'll enable video for my meeting. I'm gonna use my personal meeting ID. You could see it there. And I have two options. I can start a meeting just by using the blue bar, or right below, you'll see that I have a new whiteboard option, uh, which allows me, and I'm just gonna kind of scroll up a little bit just so you could see it right down there at the bottom, right? And what you'll see is that if I click there, I actually launched the meeting with the whiteboard already started. A shortcut at a time saver, if you will. If I start a meeting in the more traditional way, which is really just using the start a meeting button, which I'm gonna do, I have to then take the extra step of enabling, once I just allow myself to join with audio, I have to then take the extra step of going up to the top and I have to go to start, or to rather to share content. I'm clicking right there, and you'll see I have a drop down list for share content. And I have all different options. Screen is there, photos, all sorts of things. This is an iPad, so iCloud is there for iCloud Drive, plus some other options. At the very bottom, I'm gonna see whiteboard. I'm gonna click on whiteboard, and that's gonna allow me to bring up the whiteboard, and you can see it right there. Now, the whiteboard is just that, a plain empty white space initially, because the thought process is you're going to draw, you're going to write, you're going to perhaps scribble something out, whatever you may do to be able to interact and share your ideas. So what we want to do is explore some of the tool areas and the tools and the capabilities available to us in the whiteboard. That's what we're going to do right now. Now, down at the bottom, you will see there is, and I'm going to click the little arrow here to extend our toolbar so you could see I can hide it and have two or three items and I could extend it to see a bunch. Starting on the left, I'm gonna have, which is already kind of highlighted, it's very hard to see, it's a very light gray circle. I've got my pen icon, and that allows me to start drawing and to make something on the screen, and we can just do that, and we can say, as I'm writing, Hello, and you could see that I just drew all that out, and I'm using the black ink option, which is the third tool in moving left to right on the toolbar. It's the black circle that you see right here, and as I extend that, you could see I have different color options, and I can draw in red, I can draw in yellow, and green, and of course, everybody's favorite, right? Blue. And you could see I could put all sorts of stuff. Looks kind of like a Jackson Pollock painting now, right? So I have all sorts of different stuff going on there. Now, when I do all that, maybe I'm done. And I want to get rid of all that or I want to reset the whiteboard, right? I can erase what I did. And I have an eraser option, which is the second tool in between the colors I just chose and the pen. And as I do that, I just have to start scribbling over and touch areas of the screen with my stylus. I can actually do this, as you see right here right? And it's all gone. And I'm back to having a clean workspace with no trouble. So I can write, I can delete, I can change colors. All that is the first set of tools that we see just right there, those little elements in the color area. Now, once I have done that, I'm just going to get rid of that little icon right there, a little bit of color. Once I've done that, I then have some other tools to the right of the color area. I have a T, which is for text, and I want to show you how I can input text. So let me select that. And when I do that, I'm going to click on the screen with my stylus to activate the cursor so I can begin typing. We've got some interesting stuff going on in the toolbar down below. We do have a color selector that's still there. I can change the size of the stylus, or excuse me, the size of the cursor, and by extension, the size of the text I'm going to type by using that slider going left to right from very small to very large in terms of that. I also have the option to bold and to italicize text as I select, and I'm going to start typing. You'll see that in just a second. Now, 
One of the things I like about this is that the system is intuitive. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to start typing the word hello. So I'm going to go ahead and type H. And as I do that, you'll see there's text down below between the two A's, the small A and the big A, as I'm typing. And you can see when I adjust the font size by moving the slider, it does get smaller. But you'll see I've now put the icon or the slider indicator, the circle, right in the middle of that text field. And the system is trying to anticipate what I'm going to type. And as I start typing H-E-L, it goes in and says, you know, you may want uh, hey or he or help or different things, but hello is there as well. And I don't even have to keep typing. I could just select it right from the list. And we'll see right there that when I do that, that I'm able to make it a little bigger. Now it's at the bottom of the screen, justified to the right-hand side, probably not the most convenient place for me. What if I wanna take that text and just move it up there? I just grabbed it with my stylus and moved it from the lower right to the upper left, and then I can hit enter and I can start typing another word. And maybe I can type in a name like Parker, who is helping us out doing some of the camera work for this episode, right? So I could do that and I can hit enter and keep typing and I could change the text color, as you can see, just by selecting one of the colors. And you'll see I'm able to move that text around with no trouble. I can bold by clicking B and or italicize by clicking B and or I, as you can see. And I can also undo something I just did with the undo arrow at the lower left. And I can redo it by putting it back. So similar to many of the basic navigation and capability features we see in a program like Word or things like that where we're used to using an editor. So I've gone ahead and done the text. Let's just get out of there. I'm gonna just click anywhere on the screen to remove that. And now I wanna show you that I've been scroll, scrolling, if you will, or scrawling rather, I should say, using, let me just get there and select, there we go, and select the pen, this very thick kind of line. And I did that by using this S that's to the right of the T where I can see different thicknesses. And as I select, you'll see, and I just select the pen, that it does get thinner as I go. We'll make it really, really thin. And you could see I can have a very fine point or very uh, long or large and bold stroke on my pen. And then I also have a pointer option. I'm clicking on the little, looks like a little magic wand. And when I do that, I then, whoop, let me go there. I actually, you can see, just put a period there and I can actually highlight something, as you could see, and kind of draw your attention to it by moving around it or perhaps circling something and saying, hey, I want you to pay attention to this while we're in the meeting talking to somebody. Maybe students are being asked to do something and you wanna show them something on the screen. So you could obviously do that with that. So these are all the tools that I have here at my disposal, but we're not done yet. Lower right-hand corner of the screen, I'm just gonna kind of move these in so you can see. I've got three areas. I have an ellipsis, three dots in a row horizontally at the far right of the screen. When I click there, this allows me be able to see that I can use the Apple Pencil and force that to be done. I could show thumbnail videos if I have them, and I could save whatever I've done on the screen to photos. A lot of people often ask, hey, how do I save what's in the whiteboard? Essentially, it's like a screen capture. I can save it, and then I could perhaps send those whiteboards off uh, to people after the meeting so that they have the notes or whatever we talked about, which would be nice. You just click Save to Photos, and you're able to do that. Now, to the left of that, between the garbage can, which is our delete icon, and the ellipsis, the menu I just showed you, there is what looks like a, a kind of a square with a plus at the upper right-hand corner. That lets me not get rid of what was on the whiteboard. People click there and they think they lost it, but actually create a second or third or fourth whiteboard, depending on how many we already have. I can stack up to 12 whiteboards simultaneously as I'm running through a meeting. And then when I do that, I get an icon between the garbage can and the area that I just used to create the second whiteboard. It looks like a little sheaf of paper stacked up with a number. And when I click there, I can actually see the number of whiteboards that I have, as you could see up there. I would see them stacked up here individually. Each one is unique. I have the ability to edit at the upper right-hand corner. And when I click the edit icon or the word, I can remove one of the whiteboards or select the one that I wanna go to and work with. And once I have done that, just so we can see that this is a different whiteboard. I can move between them very easily just by going back and forth, as you can see. And then 
when I am done, however many whiteboards I have, whatever I want to do, I've edited, etc. I can click on one, but I can also click on the X to close at the upper right-hand corner as well. Remember, up to 12 whiteboards simultaneously as I'm using the whiteboard can be stacked up and ultimately saved and used to provide either notes in real time as you're doing things, or when I use this and I'm teaching or I'm presenting or I'm sharing in a meeting, I like to pre allocate those, meaning I like to have them set up ahead of time so I can just use them almost like a set of flashcards and bring them up in the meeting or bring them up during class and show people the content that I've already kind of teed up and set up for them, which makes it a lot easier. All right, so that's how we can use whiteboarding effectively on the iPad to either run a Zoom meeting or equally importantly, run a Zoom training event or whatever you would think of that you may be doing as you're interacting and communicating with people. I'm gonna be back with more tips on how to use Zoom, but until then, I'll see you soon and happy Zooming. Check out the playlist for more videos on how to use Zoom and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Adam Gordon and thanks for watching.